section fourteen of the american diary of a japanese girl this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the american diary of a japanese girl by yoni noguchi in ameriki part twelve eighth the poet was hoeing in his vegetable garden his attire was theatrical his red crape sash laxly surrounding his trousers lacked i'm sorry to say a large japanese tobacco bag the cap with gay ribbons was like one of li hung chang's his back carried a bearskin inside of which some slovenly yellow silk flapped down how tall he was please don't dig over there mr heine because i buried my poem there i said what poem my lady he asked the poem to be read at the unveiling of my statue of the muse on your mountain top which may occur possibly within five years the opening lines sound thus victor of life and song o muse of golden grace that's great why did you bury it don't you bury your poems the best poems are those not published the very best are those not written dante gabriel rossetti buried his house of life because they were not for a gaping millionaire's wife but only for his own little wife but his greatness was ruined when he dug them up and sold them poor poet what all the poets ought to do i think is to bury their poems in a potato garden what a shame even the poets have to eat once in a while they should wait till the potatoes grow and then sell them in a vegetable stand calling poetical potatoes do you sell your poems mr heine yes aren't you making your living with your fruits i never sell them my dear what do you do i give them to needy persons but i was obliged last year to hang up a sign no fruit lover is wanted i told an oakland minister to come up and eat some plums he brought his wife and children even his grandmother they shouldered away every bit of fruit from half a dozen trees next day so many people trampled in with an introduction from the minister such a minister i see no use to have the sign fruit grower if you don't sell well my dear lady god will be merciful to let me use it in place of poem manufacturer my uncle announced that tea was boiled we left the garden ninth the fogs held possession of our world like the darkness of night where did they invade from pacific ocean our hillside cottages looked like a tottering ship having no hope for any haven tremendous sight i planted me on the hilltop my mind merged in japanese mythology i felt as if i were the first goddess izanagi standing on the floating bridge of heaven before the creation the divine ghastliness bit my little soul i couldn't stand against it i crept down like a mouse the poet said he was preparing a lecture its title was not in books he in his bed there he passes every forenoon was reciting his song the words leaped like a leaping sword sail on sail sail on and on i threw a bunch of roses over to his bed as an admirer does to a star then i clapped my hands pan 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 tenth i went up the hill to gather mushrooms and watercresses i filled a huge basket with them i carried it down on my shoulder in chinese laundry style i paused every twenty steps i slipped within the gate of mrs heine's back garden mush rooms water cresses i called boisterously my dear girl grandma smiled out from her door keep your hands off please they are things for sale to-day they are uncommonly cheap will you buy them 
how much do you charge two thousand words of the story about your illustrious son's life what a funny vendor tell me something about him i'm ready to leave you the whole business shall i narrate to you how he started to write how interesting i ejaculated let me see your things first she said tugging the basket nearer my dear child they aren't watercresses but baby weeds i don't consider they are legitimate mushrooms either she turned upon me with compassionate objection oya oya you don't say so i exclaimed then no story grandma i looked up meekly eleventh we had sipped our supper tea some time ago a band from the bay sent up irregularly the melody of the love and prowess of dear mariners the white moon rose i sat alone on my front step and watched tenderly by the poppy my darling miss poppy shook herself prettily as if she uttered a sweet word out of her heart i imagined every sort of speech that may come from such a tiny bit of flower soda she said that she loved me i murmured i made a little letter miss poppy i love you too yours morning glory i rolled it to a ball i dropped it in her cup the moon turned gold the evening odor filled the air look she was folding her cup pressing my missive to her breast there was no question that she understood dearest friend was it silly that i cried twelfth the poet left the heights to exchange his manuscript for a gallon of whisky he carried a demijohn which was as apt to him as a baby to a woman i volunteered to clean his holy grotto the little cottage brought me a thought of one jap sage who lived by choice in a ten-foot square mountain hut the venerable mr cho my Kamo wrote his immortal ten-foot square record a bureau a bed and one easy chair everything in the poet's abode inspires repose occupy every bit of space of mr heine's cottage the wooden roof is sound enough against a storm a fountain is close by his door whenever you desire you may turn its screw and hear the soft melody of rain that's plenty what else do you covet the closetlessness of his cottage is a symbol of his secretlessness how enviable is an open-hearted gentleman woman can never tarry a day in a house without a closet he never closes his door through the year a piece of wire is added to his entrance at night he would say that that will keep out the tread of a dog and a newspaper reporter not even one book he would read the history written on the brow of a star he will say if i ask him why every side was patched by pictures and a medley of paper clippings is there anything sweeter to muse upon than personal knick-knacks oh such a dust i swept it but i thought philosophically afterward why should people be so fussy with the dust when things are but another form of dust what a far-away smell the dust had what an ancient colour i observed on the wall an odd coat and boots that dear old santa claus might have lost klondike costume i exclaimed i undressed myself and dried them on when i was ready to put on a fur cap mrs heine wandered down calling me morning glory morning glory i trembled in deadly fear i hid me promptly by the bureau under the bed i shut my eyes praying namu dai jingu don't let her find me thirteen last midnight o oh, voicelessness of the hillside yanaka i woke up the moon peeped into my sitting-room she laid a square looking glass on the floor i abandoned my bed and sat by the glass i spread on it the letter from my sweetheart i read it over and over till i couldn't read any more the moon being kidnapped by the cloud highwayman oh oscar i cried in the darkness i could not slumber all the night on account of my thought of him a letter was written to him to-day nature and love i'm now living with them fourteenth i elaborated a nosegay the poet and uncle dignified themselves in frock coats the coming of the coffin was slow mr poet had proffered his own graveyard to let an unknown poet lodge there is it because you want some one to greet you when you die i said in laughter i seated myself by a creek 
i entered involuntarily into the riddle of life and death the water under my feet rolled down positively not knowing why nor whence the wind passed willy-nilly blowing i wondered whither it went mr omar is unquestionably a true poet the petals of a rose before me fell i murmured each morn a thousand roses brings you say yes but where leaves the rose of yesterday i was crying in sadness when the coffin arrived mr heine and my uncle lifted it by either edge the neighbouring farmers and two sardonically cool gentlemen from the undertakers aided them the jaw-fallen papa of the dead carried all the posies and miss morning glory who is the belle of tokyo shouldered a bench for the purpose of sustaining the coffin when they were tired the hill is precipitous the gentlemen stopped numberless times before they stationed themselves on the top the grave was hollowed behind mr poet's monument they sank the coffin what a tremor of silence sharpened the air i was shaking the poor papa read a chapter from the bible he described his loving son's life in doleful honourableness there are a thousand flowers in spring the poet spoke whose repute is not extensively spoken like that of the rose or violet some of them are not given even a name they spend their smile and odour into the breeze and die without any repining they are content because they are true to god so a poet's life should be what is celebrity keats was told of his beautiful graveyard and he said i've already seemed to feel the flowers growing over me if this poet whom we now bury had been told at this hill he might have said i see already the butterflies beaming over my head spring is coming the poppies and buttercups shall dress the hill a church bell chimed from the valley we left the buried to his solitude my uncle and i sat under an acacia tree silent for some time look morning glory he said exhibiting a silver piece is there any story about that dollar the father of the dead paid me for carrying the coffin uncle did you accept it yes such a funny uncle why not you have spoiled all your nobility for only one dollar i upturned my face afterward appealing in gleeful tone oh uncle you ought to give me half of it fifty cents i carried the bench you know fifteen i rose at the first whistling of a meadowlark hearken to its hailing morning voice o oh, simple bird its so various moods are expressed only in its eternally changeless syllables what a magical song how bungling seemed our human vocabularies i trod the garden in bare feet naked feet sir the delicious tilliness of the ground animated me rapturously do you believe me if i confess that i knelt and kissed it i said that i would not mind burying my nude body for a few hours mother earth is so sweet i ran up the hill humming an oriental ditty the air was relishable like an ice cream on a summer midnight the beautiful sun was rising i clapped my palms thrice reverently bowing am i a sun worshipper yes i cleansed my feet in the water of the creek when i returned from the hill i sat me on a rock extending my bare feet in the sunlight i thought that towel wiping was too much of a modernism uncle oh uncle i called what is it miss morning glory the poet jutted out from a bamboo bush by the wooden bridge over the creek such charming feet he said i instantly lowered my skirt blushing he was carrying a spade and hoe he said that he had been planting flowers about the grave of our friend ever since four o'clock to make it beautiful is high poetry he philosophized what do you wish with uncle my child he continued i want my shoes let me have the honour of fetching them for you he said in amiable dignified docility sixteen the poet gave me five feet square behind the willow cottage for my potato garden i sticked a stick at each corner i encircled it with my crape sash the note hanging on it read graveyard of morning glory's poem i hired uncle for ten cents to clear off every weed i raked i set the seeds i got a suspicious coat and pants from a nook in the unrespectable barn it was fortunate that the horse who may also be a poet he is so philosophically thin didn't shout ho oh, clothes thief i put 
them on the limbs of an acacia tree i planted it on my graveyard to scare away wild intruders it is holy ground i wondered when the potatoes would grow End of section fourteen